I'm Maria Soreo from the Long Beach Grand Prix, and here is my starting grid spotlight. I am a television sports reporter, anchor, and host. Now, I work in Los Angeles covering the NBA, hockey, Major League Baseball, the NFL, NASCAR, and IndyCar. Now, I cover all of these sports and more, and I just happen to use a wheelchair. I may have been the victim of a drunk driver when I was five years old, but that was nothing more than a bump in the road for me. One of the greatest things I've learned from professional athletes is our greatest victories happen when we overcome obstacles in our life. I've been an actress appearing on such shows as the Fox hit Prison Break and the ABC Family Show Make It or Break It. I was the first woman in a wheelchair to compete in a Miss California beauty pageant. After that, I created the first fitness videos for people that needed to adapt their workout routines standing up or sitting down. I was the national spokesperson for Cybex Fitness Equipment, where I traveled the world hosting my own exercise show. And my co-hosts were none other than professional athletes who would come on and talk about how they adapted their fitness routines so they could get back on track. And as they say, one thing led to another, and that's how I became a sports reporter. Now here's a look at some of the superstars I've had a chance to chat with. You talk about the fan experience, which is so hugely important here, and all of the legends that come out to Dodger Stadium. Do you want them to be included in the fan experience as well? The Maury Wills, the Don Newcomb. No question about it. I mean, they're, they're, look, they are the Dodgers. That's right. They yeah. made the Dodgers. Over the years, you've seen you know stadiums change, rosters change, managers change. What was the toughest one for you along the way? Ooh, uh, I think probably when some of the players leave that you're used to playing with for so long, you know. I am here with Drew Downey, who is now a Stanley Cup champion. What is going through your mind right now? I'm just so happy. Uh, you know, I don't even know what to say. It's, uh, it's the best moment of my life. And uh... well, What happened for you personally? Why was this year so successful for you and continues to be? I guess uh, it's a combination of a lot of little things. Sometimes people don't realize. We are here with Mario Andretti now. We know Mario is passionate about racing, but he is also passionate about wine. In fact, I know you have a winery just a few miles from the track. Yes, indeed. Um, this is a fabulous event for us because uh, we have uh, other things going on at the winery every evening. Well, this has been quite an exciting and historical season in the Indy Car Series as four drivers got their very first wins this year. I sat down with two of them, Charlie Kimball and James Hinchcliffe, who talk about what it was like on that very last lap winning their first race. I remember looking at, at all the guys' faces because... It was my first IndyCar win, but it was at least four or five of the guys, their first IndyCar win as well. Crew members, engineers, and so to be a part of that experience for them, as well as for myself, was, was really special. And I mean, it was it was crazy. I mean, that, that race was, uh, it was so stressful, that last stint, because Elliot was behind us. He was, you know, obviously very quick the whole day. He was on red tires, we were on blacks, and... I knew even the slightest mistake and I was going to lose it. And I really did. If he was going to pass me on pace, fine. Best man wins. But I was not going to let it be because I made a mistake. I would not have been able to live with myself. And I was just, oh man, the pressure I was putting on myself was out of control. And I'll tell you, when I crossed the line, it was just pure relief. You know, it wasn't, I wasn't even happy. I was just like, I was just glad it was over. I don't think you could ask for anybody better. You know, um, he was a guy I certainly looked up to and admired well, well before I drove for him. And then when I got to drive for him and kind of hear the story of how, you know, home wall camps and Newman's own and all those things came along, you respect him even more. I mean, you know, if he really wanted, if he were a selfish guy at all, he would have taken some of the profit off of Newman's own and his family would be a lot wealthier now than, they're wealthy, but a lot wealthier than they would have been. But he's not, you know, that's the type of guy he was. And well, now you've seen some of my work. And a big thank you goes out to all of the athletes that have encouraged me to tell my story. Thank you for inspiring me with yours. Now, people ask me why I cover IndyCar, and you know what I tell them? If you have to ask me why I cover IndyCar, you have never been to IndyCar. I'm Maria Soreo, and this was my Starting Grid Spotlight.